Experience. This is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of cover-up tattoos. <laughs> over let's talk about the different types of cover-up tattoos realistically there's three types of cover-ups that we can do to try and remove the ability of a person to see another tattoo they each work in a different way let's go over right the first one should be number one is going to be a cover-up big surprise right so cover-up tattoo is simply put where you take an image that you design and you put it directly on top of another one. It could be anything. Whatever your bad tattoo is, it's a name or something, right, that's there, and you're taking, I don't know, a stick, and you're putting it over top of it. That's a cover-up tattoo. This doesn't seem like it'd be a very effective cover-up tattoo, but it still is. You're taking something, and you're covering it with another one. There's limitations to these cover-up types of tattoos. One, depending on how big the design is or how complex it is, how dark it is especially, and given the design that's going on top of it, how complex or light it is, this may not work. So, cover-ups usually are going to be stuck into a grouping where we have something that's small, it has to be linear, right? Or something that's not very complex. Not complex. And why is this? So, if we follow these rules with the three that we're taking here, it's not, it's small, it's linear, and it's not complex, doing a cover-up actually can be really effective. And it's not difficult to approach that way. I'm not saying that you can't cover up some very intricate back piece or something with some other stuff that's going on, but for the sake of time, money, thought, planning, everything else, this is the easiest way to deal with a cover-up. If it fits into this little category here, you're good to go. All right, a second type of cover-up that we have is a redirect. So a redirect is where you have an image, let's just say it's an equal sign because that's what's cool now. Redirect, what we're gonna do is think about this, right? This is the original focal point. This focal point is something that people are gonna be drawn to, they wanna look at, even if it's a bad tattoo, and this is what they're gonna see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna create something that looks better right? Which, you know, I mean, this is whatever. We're going to move it away from it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the space in between and around it, whatever, and we're just going to distract people. So rather than looking at this, they look at this, right? They think about if we put like a flower or something else that's here, and maybe some of the leaves end up covering up these spaces. We have some dark shading or something that's behind it. You don't have to work as hard to actually cover up the existing tattoo that's there because you're going to make people want to look at this here. And that's the trick. You're just redirecting their attention from one focal point to another. These redirects work really well if you have multiple pieces, right? If you have multiple pieces that need to be covered up in a single section, a redirect is great because you can take like a bunch of small, desperate images that are kind of stuck on maybe an arm or a leg or a back or a chest or whatever, and you can take one big thing or multiple big things and you can kind of put them around it and use those spaces as the focal point to distract people. They're gonna end up looking at them and then just work something into the mid-ground, background, foreground, whatever, that's gonna end up covering up those things that's there. It doesn't take a lot of work. On average, you can see redirects most often occur in Japanese style tattoos that are used as a cover-up, which is fantastic. Redirects also work really well with light colored stuff, right? If it's light colored, more often than not, we can do a redirect on top of it. We may not still be able to cover up something, like if it's, you know, a, a sunflower or something with a little bit of line work, something like that. We may, may not be able to cover up all the lines that are going around it or through it or in it, but because it's light on the inside, it's going to be easier to distract someone's eyes by throwing something maybe mid-tone or dark over top of here and moving something light over there. Which remember, yellow is the most vivid aspect color thingy that our eyes are attracted to. I think it's darker than that doesn't work. So. You have a yellow sunflower, it's pretty easy to distract by it by covering it up with something blue and putting something yellow next to it. All right, remember this, multiple pieces, something that's light colored. Doesn't matter if it's big, medium, small, usually works pretty well. <clears throat> Last way of doing a cover up is the berry. So the berry method takes an image, especially if it's like somewhat complex, if it has organic shapes, we can do this, it's complex has an organic, organic 
shape or is really dark, right? If we take those three things as being our guidelines on this, if you have somebody who has an arm, it's a weird looking arm, and they have tribal. That's going through this, and we need to like get whatever, and a name or some shit, right? We start looking at the berry thing is instead of looking at the images that are there, however dark or however light or however connected or however not they are, we don't think about that as usable area to tattoo. We start looking at the spaces around it as places where we need to put a tattoo. We ignore these existing tattoos, right? Any of the tattoos that are there just get left to the left to the side while we're doing our design. More often than not, you'll see this with large flowing things, underwater scenes, super complex organic shapes or tattoos, biomechanical, things like this. What we do is we set our designs and things that are in there and we either move these images that are existing into it either to the foreground, right? The foreground or we move them to the background. We bury them in the line of sight that you are not currently using. When we think about, you know, plain inside of a design, the mid-ground is always where you're focusing because there's always stuff in the front of it and behind it that you're not focusing on when you're looking at that stuff. So that's how you bury it. So, when people come up and they ask about what types of cover-up tattoos that we can do, we know there's a few right there. I know there's a lot of ways that we could try to phylogenize this and move it off into different areas where we could have like, you know, the cover-up, we have blast-overs and other types of, I don't care. These are the three major categories and this is the way that you should try thinking about trying to do a cover-up tattoo if you're confronted with one. Any hoozles. This is Ryan with BetterTattooing.com, signing off.